Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Master Aquatics. In this video, I will be showing you how to hatch angelfish eggs, or this method will also work in hatching other fish eggs. This is a method that I use when I was breeding my angelfish, and it's a very effective method in artificially hatching fish eggs. The reason being for this method is in case you have a pair of fish that constantly eat their eggs, or you just want to micromanage the fish's eggs. So I have went online, researched, did lots of research, and came up with this method. This is a very easy method to use, and hopefully you guys can understand it. Just in case you guys have questions or you know you don't understand something, then go in the description. There are lots of other videos related to this that I have made separately that will answer your questions. Or you can email me or leave me a comment down below and I will respond to you. In this video, I have two angelfish that were constantly laying eggs for me. The green thing that they are laying eggs on is called a breeding slate. This is a slate that you can easily use to move the eggs. First thing you want to do is set up a 10 or a 20 gallon aquarium. It is up to you. It's all about the quantity of the eggs that you are wanting to hatch and then later on the quantity of babies you are wanting to raise. So if you're looking at a mass quantity of hundreds or thousands then you might want to go with a 20 gallon. If you're just trying to raise just a few then go with a 10 gallon or possibly a 5 gallon. This next step is actually optional. I decided to paint the 10 gallon tank that I use. The reason being for this is that usually fish feel a little bit more secure and a little bit more safe when you have the back and the sides of the tank painted. That way if you decide to walk across the aquarium they don't get startled too much. Um, it's really up to you though. It's really easy to paint an aquarium. All you need is some acrylic paint, a paintbrush and that's about it and let the paint dry, air dry for about 10 to 20 minutes and then you're good to go. Doesn't necessarily have to be uh, a specific color. You can do any color you want. I decided to do this maroon color for this 10 gallon tank and that's just the color that I wanted to use. You can go with orange, pink, whatever you want to do. As far as lighting goes, you don't need any specific lighting either. You can use some very cheap uh, standard lighting. It, it doesn't really matter. Also, by the way, all of the equipment that I will be showing in this video is in the description in case you are wanting to order some equipment for this setup. These are what you call a sponge filter, aka baby proof filters. The reason why they are called baby proof filters is because these filters do not kill or suck up any fish. Alright, so this is what you call a air stone. They come in a lot of different sizes and color. Their purpose is to produce some bubbles. The reason for the bubbles is to aerate the eggs. This is how you make it work. You need some airline tubing such as this one right here. Airline tubing comes in black and clear. Again, all of this is in the description down below in case you want to order some for yourself. It's very easy to set up. One last thing that you will need in combination of those two items is a air pump. You don't need a specific air pump. What I recommend as far as air pumps go, I recommend that you get one that has a knob that you can use to adjust the settings of low, medium, and high. The reason being is because you don't want an air pump that's going to blow bubbles too hard or too fast for the eggs because you don't want the eggs to be damaged. Last thing you'll need is you will need some type of breeding slate. It doesn't have to be like the one in my in my clip here. There are different kinds. There are rock slates. There are also these slates that look like cones. Again, all of these items are going to be down in the description down below. I'll also explain how these things work. There's lots of good information in the description. So please, if you don't understand something in the video, please go down in the description. Now, once your fish have laid their eggs on these things, go ahead and just take it out. You can keep them out of the water for a good few minutes. They, as long as they don't dry up, then you're good. Just don't keep them out of the water too long. But I recommend that you quickly put them in some tank water in a bucket and then move that bucket to the tank that you're planning on hatching these eggs in. That's the safest way and the best way to keep the eggs healthy and not damage them. Because like I said, if you keep them out of the water, too long they could dry up and then die um, now here's what the setup should look like once you put that slate down in there you want to get that airline tubing attached to an airstone and an air pump and adjust 
the airline tubing with the air stone to have it in front of the eggs the way it is now you don't want it to blow bubbles to like right directly onto the eggs but just close enough to where it's keeping all of the nasty stuff in the water from the eggs because eggs they can be damaged really easily and then they will turn white if they turn white that means the egg is dead and the egg will not hatch but even if you do do this you will get some small you will get a small percentage of white eggs just not as much and you will have to get rid of those white eggs but if you don't do this at all almost all of the eggs or even the majority of them will turn white um, there is also a tutorial in the description on how to get rid of the white eggs um, sometimes I did it sometimes I didn't do it it really just depends on you if you do have a batch where there's a good amount of white eggs I recommend that you take them out because if you don't the fungus will spread to the other healthy eggs now if the eggs kind of look like this where it's just completely white you want to just go ahead and just get rid of the eggs completely because they are all dead now once you've done that a few days later I would say about three to four days later depending on the temperature of the water I keep mine at 80 degrees 80 degrees is the best temperature for them to hatch makes them hatch the fastest they will start spreading all over the place and they will start wiggling they won't swim but they'll start wiggling at this time I recommend that you start setting up a hatchery of brine shrimp because three days after that they're gonna start swimming and they're gonna want to eat so I recommend that you start setting up some baby brine shrimp hatcheries if you don't know how to hatch baby brine shrimp there's a card right here on the top right hand corner that you can click on and it'll show you step by step on how to hatch these shrimp this is the shrimp that pretty much every baby fish will eat this is the best thing to feed your baby fish there are also other things you can feed your baby fish but this is the number one thing this is the stuff that's going to help them grow the fastest um, from my experience you can pretty much hatch these guys in almost anything you can hatch them in water bottles you can hatch them in flower vases you can hatch them in glass cups and liquor bottles whatever you want to hatch them in whatever can hold a body of water you can pretty much hatch them in that they're so easy to hatch like all you need is just a few things some aquarium salt some water the chlorinator and then the air pump with an air stone with some airline tubing and you're good to go now with angelfish with baby angelfish I'm not sure about other fish species you will have to do your research on the type of fish that you are hatching but with angelfish these guys they're a little bit more sensitive than most other fish so you do have to work really hard on keeping these guys alive now you will have to feed them almost three to four times a day sometimes even five um, small increments of food you don't want to overfeed them because if you overfeed them their bellies will explode so don't give them too much of that baby brine shrimp even though they will demand it from you just don't give it to them don't listen to them they will die if you overfeed them but they will also die if you underfeed them it's easier to underfeed them than to overfeed them also if you do want to use a hang on the back filter instead of the sponge filters you will need a baby proof to hang on the back filter you'll just need to get a filter foam and you will need to make a hole in it that way you can have the intake of the hang on the back filter go inside of the foam but me personally it wasn't as effective as it was um, the sponge filter so I'd rather just save the trouble and just go with the sponge filters but you know some people out there prefer the hang on the back filter also you will need to learn how to do water changes for the baby fish you can learn how to do that with the video down below in the description and if you do that for two months with angelfish you'll get them to start looking like this they'll start looking like little arrowheads they're beautiful and they will grow to be even more beautiful and you'll see them shift from these ugly little alien looking things with just eyes and a mouth and they will turn into these beautiful animals and it's truly fun to do it's just very time consuming and it's just a lot of work I also forgot to mention in the beginning of the video if the eggs already hatched and the eggs are on a leaf 
or they are on glass or something like that you can use something to take them out and move them into another tank for yourself to take care of if you decide to artificially raise them or hatch them after they've hatched um, just get a turkey baster and you can go ahead and move them the parents won't like this but after you're done they'll forget that they even had babies in there and then a week later they will lay some eggs again so don't worry about the parents being upset they'll be upset for a few seconds and then they'll forget all about their babies um, so hopefully this video was helpful again there's lots of helpful information in the description don't forget to check it out and i'll see you guys in the next video take care and peace out